call the uh, February 13th school committee meeting to order. Tonight we'll have uh, public comment, uh, consent agenda, uh, reports, and then the new business uh, purpose of calling the meeting was to uh, vote on a timeline for uh, the uh, hiring a uh, business manager. So having said that, uh, any public comment? Yes, Dr. Quorum. Jeffrey Quorum, Ridge Road. Uh, driving home earlier this week, I heard an NPR story that said the Massachusetts Teachers Association has um, decided to follow or is moving towards um, adopting um, recommendations that have been happening at national level to stop active shooter drills in schools because they feel that it is tra uh, traumatizing the younger children, particularly without noticeably substantially increasing the safety or security. And I wondered what the thoughts of the school committee are on that particular issue. We have not had that discussion yet with our RTA, with RTA has RTA. not brought it up. Does, yeah, MTA apparently was was looking at that. So I would and that would that would trickle down to to RTA. Yeah, um, but I mean, so that that's MTA's position, I, and certainly the school committee can decide on its own whether they feel that these active shooter drills are traumatizing the children or improving safety yeah. on on balance. Thank you. I, mean, I can make. Go ahead. I you know I just want to comment on that is that I think the way active shooter drills are done plays a big role in that and I, I don't think it's appropriate to put a broad brush over active shooter drills without seeing how they're done appropriately in at different levels and we've we've worked very hard at making them developmentally appropriate um, at each level, preschool all the way up to, to high school. So I think before the conversation is we're just not going to do them, I think we need to look at what are the issues surrounding that? Because it's something that we've been working on for several years. And, and we, would, we would have that discussion with MTA, or MTA and our, well, through RTA, and it, it doesn't necessarily mean that we would adopt what what they say I'd like to know the reasons for it uh, before you know and I think I think I mean I've done a lot of workshops on safety drills um, I think the police department would have a different perspective also and I think that would be important to hear yes I'm, I'm wondering if, as a part of that process, it might be good to collect some, whether by survey or something else, some feedback from parents of kids who have gone through the safety drills, just to know what their experiences have been, so that there's another dimension to that discussion. Yeah, that's, that would be way down the road. Uh, we would need, I mean, I would want to hear from RTA first. I'm not going to take direction from MTA. We would take it from RTA. No, I was just thinking that if there are decisions that are going to be made about it, that would be one important yep. dimension of the, one piece of the data yep. about it. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll do reports. Uh, Mr. Parks. Nothing as of yet. <laughs> So I do, I'll be really quick. Um, at the beginning of the select board meeting um, on Tuesday, what was it yesterday? Tuesday. 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 It's just a blur. Um, they discussed um, the two select board chairs of the ad hoc presented the proposal for the structure of the ultimate alliance for social justice committee um, and the committee had a the select board had a discussion and had questions and in the end they said they had not posted that there would be a vote everybody is learning now 
about posting for the public when there's going to be a vote. So what they decided to do was empower Ann Landry, who is the liaison to the Library Board of Trustees, to go and present the proposal with them and have a discussion <coughs> about the viability and their, their feelings about the proposed structure. So that's where that process is right now. And if I can um, combine two things, I just want to make sure that in the minutes of 2-6, of February 6th, that there is, um, that it's made very clear that it's a proposal at this point and it's not a fait accompli. Um, under the liaison report, my liaison report, so the proposal was going to the select board and the name, it says the name of this organization will be, but this is a proposal as opposed to a final, a final decision because it could change. I mean, there were lots of discussions that night about the request for a full-time executive director and what happens if um, funding to the town goes down and what rationale there is for that. There were a lot of discussion, a lot of discussion that was left to be had. So I want to just make clear that this is a proposal and not um, the final. Can we just change the word will to may? The name of this organization may be the That's writing. That's fine. Okay. I mean, I'm fine. I, I just, the wording that I added was so the we're, proposal we're, is that the name of the organization will be. Okay, so once we get to the consent agenda, we'll. Right, I'm fine. I, I don't want to vote against the consent agenda. I just want to make that, that sure that that wording is clear. Oh, thank you. And then I see that um, Chris Kelly is not here, so I just wanted to give a shout out to the Reading Public Schools and the Pegasus Foundation for bringing Mikey Fallon here on Monday night. Um, he was his own wonderful self, and um, I've seen his and organized his presentations many times, and a lot of the parents in the audience were actually there because their kids told them they ought to go see him. So. The goal of having the school assemblies combined with the community presentations seems to work because then there's discussion at the dinner table or wherever. The kids and the parents are able to see the same thing. And he's very provocative um, in terms of making you think about the stereotypes and assumptions that we make about people that we see and meet and how important personal interaction and respect and um, connection is. And the difference between this presentation and the ones I've seen in the past is that he really wound his, in his own personal experience, which was very, very powerful. Um, and I think from what I heard from the people there and what I saw, very worthwhile. I haven't done a survey, but um, it was a very powerful presentation, um, and he loves coming back here. Thank you. Thank you. I have a really quick one. Um, I just wanted to let the committee know that the next CPAC meeting is Wednesday, February 26th at 10 a.m. The board is trying something new this year, which is to have um, to try a meeting late morning just to see if there are parents who have a hard time making it to evening meetings who might be able to make it to a 10 a.m. meeting. So it's sort of a trial to see if they get a different group of folks. So um, CPAC meets Wednesday, February 26th at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, so a couple of things, and Mr. Parks may be able to add in, but um, it sounds like what we were concerned about with regards to the RMLD is on hold and under renegotiation. Um, there are a couple different proposals that they're looking at and back and forth discussion at the select board meeting about that. So that's good news, I think. Um, and that's a very positive step um, from partnership across the, across the town. Um, I'm not going to cover the rest of that meeting. It's already publicly <laughs> known. So. Um, but I will add to the CPAC report a little bit. Um, uh, this past Tuesday night, um, the Federation for Children with Special Needs was here with basic uh, parent training and information for basic rights, uh, understanding the IEP. And there were 41 people here, which yeah. was, uh, according to some CPAC members, Absolutely. the second most ever attended in a CPAC meeting, other than the Alabardia meeting, which was um, 
very popular as well. She did an excellent job, a lot of back and forth questions, um, and she just presented in such an open, honest, you know, relatable way, and I think it really helped a lot of parents in that room. So um, Jen was also, Mrs. Dice was also very uh, interactive as well, and that the whole vibe was good, it was very positive. Um, so just Ms. Kelly showed up as well. And I, I think every people people appreciate that the administration is showing up to those as well. I know we work like 45 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours, 70 hours a week sometimes to do it, <laughs> but that was appreciated by those in the in the in the, in the community as well. I, I can say that Chris Kelly went there from Mikey. Yes. <laughs> No. Wasn't that? No, that was, was a different Monday. night. That was a different night. Oh, sorry. Mikey was Monday. I know yeah. she was rushing off to another meeting. From something else, yeah. <laughs> ad hoc. It was ad hoc, yeah. Oh. Okay. Select Great. board. To Thank you. Dr. Sure. Doherty, did you? I don't have any reports. Okay. Uh, we have a consent agenda. Yes. Move to approve the consent agenda with the friendly amendment to change the word will to may. Second. In and, the minutes. And, <laughs> and the minutes, yeah. Anything else? All those in favor? 6 0. Okay, now uh, we'll talk about the <clears throat> business manager timeline. So I appreciate the committee coming on an additional night, um, but given the fact that I feel that we need to move forward with this process, the additional two weeks before our next uh, school committee meeting with the, the FinCom, um, I felt that it was important to meet. Um, so there's really two processes going on right now. One is uh, we are in the process of looking for an interim business manager that will take us from March till July. Um, so we're looking at different options for that. Uh, most likely we're looking at bringing in a retired uh, business manager um, for that, that time frame. And, as you know from last year when we had Sharon here, and Sharon was excellent, um, for a variety of reasons, a lot of retired administrators cannot work a full week. So that's the downside of, of bringing someone in, especially when we're trying to close out the fiscal year. So we're, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that, that we bring someone in or someone's in that are able to continue to move our school district forward uh, in closing out the fiscal year. The second processes that's now happening is, um, and we will, if you approve this process tonight, we will post the position tomorrow, is uh, to move forward with a permanent business manager position. Um, what we're going to do is a little bit of restructuring. Um, so the business manager's position is different than the chief financial officer position in that it is uh, strictly focusing on the finance piece, transportation, and food service. Uh, facilities and technology uh, would, would come back under the superintendent as it was when Mrs. Dowd was first hired. And the whole premise is, is that we bring a person in, um, we have them focus on the budgetary piece, um, the expenses, accounts payable, uh, reconciliation, all of the payroll, all of those important aspects and then as time goes on as they get more comfortable and competent with the position and build their skill set then we can continue to add pieces to it so um, that's the rationale we're going with a business manager versus um, the chief financial officer at this point I, I will tell the committee that this is a very difficult position to fill um, hence the fact that we're trying to make the time frame a little bit more succinct in case I have to go out for a second um, round. Um, for those of you that have been involved in the past, uh, the pool for previous business manager, uh, business manager hires, the pool has not been that deep. Um, and in talking to superintendents last week who have gone through the search this year, um, they maybe have one, two candidates. Um, one community had to go through a second round uh, because the pool would, did not have sufficient staff, uh, a sufficient ca qualified candidate. So, um, so is that uh, with those other searches, are they doing it? So, doing it the same way we are that 
they're just looking for someone that's handling the the uh, financial statements and not necessarily having you know HR or whatever or not HR but uh, yeah this you know, different um, maintenance and all the other this different iterations I mean sometimes they call director of finance sometimes they call assistant superintendent uh, for finance and operations I know Andover just posted for his uh, chief operations officer um, uh, at a pretty high salary I noticed um, so the, it, it depends on the community so yeah one of the things I was gonna say and you I think you just addressed it was I would want the search committee to select candidates with the eye that these are people that can grow in the job Correct. and not just always going to be bean counters or whatever that, that they can do do more you know with, yes with absolutely experience. yes so I'm gonna have uh, Jen Allard go through the timeline um, okay. in a little bit more detail yes before we go through the timeline as far as the people involved oh yes in the yeah. search I'd really like to see a FinCom member on there yes, we did discuss that. okay um, I think knowing that they work closely with FinCom it makes good sense to have that person on there okay that makes sense I have no problem with that I was gonna say the same thing it's okay <laughs> if Jen okay mm -hmm. good yeah. All right. Thanks, Jen. Um, so thank you hi everyone so I um, to second John just to start you know I think it was important that he noted our timeline um, and the range of dates how we're um, I wouldn't say more condensed than typical we, we've done searches in a similar fashion before in this similar time frame um, with a similar basic structure uh, the reason being for you know the exact reasons he outlined which was knowing what we know about the current applicant pool out there there's there's always possibility that we'll need to go um, back into a second round potentially hopefully that's not the case um, to start we um, this is slightly different like I said this is for those of you who haven't seen these timelines before um, or have been through this process before we do have a similar structure for all of our um, administrator searches What's different about this is the nature of the, in this case, the business manager position, the involvement of the school committee um, is a little bit more elevated in this, in this search than it is in others. Um, so that's only the slight change that you'll see. We do, um, we are expecting a July 1 start for the position. So again, looking for the interim while we're conducting the search to have someone ready which is very typical um, to have someone start off in that July 1 start of fiscal year um, so it's not uncommon to see that gap of time from our search to their start date we will be looking we have a couple of um, current staff members and uh, identified for the committee for the screening committee you'll see a couple of blanks there we often will um, either look for those who are willing to come on if we're unable to find those willing we, we may tap some people on the shoulder to see if there's some interest so we have a few identified but looking to finalize that within the next few days so to start um, their uh, superintendent already will sit in on the process uh, though not directly listed as a committee member but does kind of oversee um, so he's able to be a part of that and in, in, in get a full scope of the process and of the candidates also to note the dates times locations they are tentative uh, it's our hope that they won't change but we always run into that here and there I, I remember in a previous search I think we had a snow day one day and we had to do a complete restructure so those things happen um, but we've dealt with it before so um, hope would be it stays it stays where it's at but there is a slight potential you could see some change in the dates so to start tonight we're gonna have you look through and approve the process the hope would be if approved tonight uh, I would be looking to post this out tomorrow our typical places for posting and where we've had success before has been through our online posting um, applicant tracking system talent ad which posts out to school spring we also do a post through monster which helps us get a more nationwide 
um, pool of applicants, and we also look towards our professional networks uh, through the superintendent's network, the business officers, as well as um, the network I'm a part of for the personnel association. Uh, so those are usually really help us to round out and, and pick from you know every corner that we can. So we'll be looking to do that tomorrow, hopefully. We also send out an online survey, which you see scheduled for the 19th through the 24th. This is done through SurveyMonkey. We typically do this for all of our administrative positions. We're looking for feedback from the staff, feedback from uh, the community about what qualities they're looking for in the next business manager. We use that information when we meet with the screening committee so they see that it helps guide us in what we're looking for and, and help assist in what we're looking for in terms of qualities for the next business manager. So that will go out and we'll have a little time frame for those to respond out on. It uh, goes through our school emails for staff uh, and then we send out, Linda helps me send that out as well, to our uh, community. So that's going to be accessible through a link that they can access. Once convened, our first step in the process for the screening committee is to hold the organizational meeting. Again, this is a meeting that we, in which we discuss kind of an overview of the process, the purpose of the screening committee. We discuss more about some confidentiality and I give everyone a bit of a rundown as to what, what it should look like. Um, so I hope it's to have that done by the 27th. Uh, we would meet after that again with the screening committee to design the interview questions. We do this collaboratively through the through the process of um, the screening committee. So we have you know some basic things that we use to guide us again. The survey information. Um, oftentimes in the past we've used um, blue ribbon standards in order to help guide us. Um, the evaluation process for the business manager or for any other administrator role to help us really craft interview questions that are relevant to the position. Um, so we would look to do that as a, as a screening committee. Uh, and then deadlines for applications would be March 6th. Again, relatively standard time frame, about three weeks. It gives us um, about three weekends as well for applications to come in. So we found that that is a comfortable range to sit at. Um, we're not, you know, we're up enough where we can get applicants in, but not too long to where we're having some waiting out too long and we're losing those who may be in other searches. Uh, first round candidate interviews would be set for the 11th of March. That's a full day. Um, and again, that's the screening committee, a part of that entire process. And then after that, the screening committee would make recommendations to the superintendent for pre-finalists. At that time, the superintendent would go through his vetting process, which you see there scheduled for the 12th through the 18th of March, uh, which includes, again, in, you know, additional interviews, um, any other references that may be needed to be checked or conducted during that time before we're putting out public finalists. So at this point, we would be putting forward and the superintendent would be putting forward public finalists for the committee. We would be looking to hold on March 19th the interviews. Um, the school committee would be conducting the interviews for the finalists at that time. And then on March 23rd, our hope is to have um, the finalized school committee vote on who we're looking to, to place into the position. Dr. Darty, uh, we spoke <laughs> earlier today and one of the things we talked about was uh, having small school committee yeah. groups meet with, is is that in the 12th through the 18th? Yeah, it's 12th through so the 18th, so there'll be smaller interviews, so we would, um, I mean, one of the things that's important to note is this will be the first thing that the three new school committee members will be right. doing. <laughs> so it's good to have So it. So yes, I, them being a part of small group interviews along with the rest of the central office leadership team is usually that's how we do the process. And, um, I do want to add, um, just to piggyback on Jen, the 19th is, those are all public interviews. Right. Those are not in executive session, those are public interviews. I have um, just a th oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I've thought about the composition of the screening committee. Yes. We have some parents that have been very involved in the budget 
Um, I know they're not called budget parents anymore, but they used to be called budget parents and they still come and I'm wondering, I think it might be really good to have them, a, a representative on the screening committee, if that's possible. I would, yeah, agree with that. I was gonna say the same thing. And then I have one more. I know you have your go-tos for posting and I appreciate how many you go to already. One of the district goals is to attract diverse candidates. Correct. And I'm wondering if any of those spaces are, or if there are other places that you might also post so that we could expand the diversity of the candidates that we're reaching out to. Sure. I can, um, like I said, Monster is national based. So usually that's what helps us to open it up. Um, but I'm absolutely always open to looking for more spaces and realms to do that, so absolutely. I don't know if there's a, a group that I just learned about, the Teacher's Lounge. Um, that's one group that has, um, it brings educators of color together to learn and support one another, and I wonder if they have any listserv or, or any mechanism that they have that they can recommend to reach out to, right. and I can get you that information if that's. that's great. Thank you. It's just one idea, yeah, and then. Thank you. Do we, Thanks. are we members of LinkedIn? Do you have a LinkedIn? No, we don't have a school LinkedIn no, account. we don't. Uh, depending on how you set those up, there can be very, it's funny, I actually was talking recently with some other HR directors in, in neighboring districts, and depending on how you structure that, it can be very costly. Mm -hmm. um, we have, I, I was actually looking into this yesterday, and um, I mean, it's it can be upwards of like eight thousand dollars for a yeah in order to post on there. Uh, so I had a, a few others who were kind of looking through and vetting, and they were kind of giving us some feedback on what their process has been. Meeting with some reps from LinkedIn, um, so that can sometimes, if we're going in as like an organization to do that, mm. can be very costly. Um, so it's. Would it be Piggyback on that, would yeah. it be possible for those of us on LinkedIn to use our networks potentially to broadcast a monster posting or a school spring oh, sure. posting or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, I mean, there, that's a slight workaround. Um, like if you, if you have your own kind of personal based. Mm. I, we, I know, I do. Yeah. 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 And then some, whether they are CPAs or not, it's other story. But right. My wife is. So. Yes. Thanks. Um, so I have one comment and one suggestion. My comment is um, this is typical of the process we've used in the past for years, and I just wanted to share that I've been on several of these committees now, going back almost 10 years, and the process for anyone who hasn't been involved in it is really, really thorough and really, really good. So I just wanted to make that statement. I, I think this is a model for how this should be done. So I just want to express my support for this process. Um, and my suggestion, Dr. Doherty, you typically, when the screening committee is finalized, publicize it through your yes. newsletter. Yes. Um, so I would just ask that when all the names are filled in and the committee is finalized, I think the public likes to see who are the actual individuals who are on the screening committee. So I know you typically do that. Just wanted to make it clear you do it this time. Thanks. So uh, I would like to, I guess I'm putting somebody on the spot. I'd like to ask Mr. Wise if you're able, able to, to be our well member. Here, yeah. Yes, please. I assume the committee's the all right. I know, right? <laughs> yes. I'm okay. I just had another sure. two questions, sorry. Um, in regards to your um, the publicizing of the screening committee, I also like that. But I think coupled with that, there should be the rules that the screening committee have to abide by. So that there's a lot of confidentiality in this process. And so the public, when they know who's on the committee, need to understand that the committee cannot tell them all the names of all the initial applicants because those people are risking yeah, um, their jobs by applying here. And so I think it needs to be really clear that the, the people on the screening committee can say, you know, these are my requirements and rules so I can talk to you about some things, but not about all things. Through our um, our first so meeting, our, 
our um, yeah. You can't talk about anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Through our um, our organizational meeting, which is the first meeting we have with the full screening committee. Um, we go through, we have a form that each screening committee must sign in terms of confidentiality. Um, so we go through that and we have, not only is it just the bulleted list, I mean, we discuss through it. If anyone has questions, we, we kind of bounce that back and forth. Um, so there is, they do sign off to that. Um, and we go through, I mean, there's really, what, what is the work done in the screening committee is confidential, even beyond once, you know, they've done their job of recommending the pre-finalists. Um, so we do absolutely um, go through that in depth with them, and, and there is a contract that they sign. So, and, and I know that about the screening committee. What I'm trying to do is make sure the screening committee is protected from the public, in that the public should understand about right, that yeah. confidentiality, because we might know who's on the screening committee, but they're not allowed to answer us, and so they shouldn't have. To I'm, they will have to explain that, but they shouldn't have to defend that. Those are the rules. That's what they signed. You know me, and you can trust me, and then I'll ask good questions, but that's about how, how much information you get. So that's, that's just where I was coming from. Yeah. And then my other question was about um, the survey that's going to be given for the online survey for staff and parents. Yes. And that is anonymous, right? I just um, want to confirm. Yes, so that you do not, yeah. Typically we have not, we haven't had a required field at all for a name. Yep, completely Thank anonymous. Thank you. Yes. Uh, one other thing, I'd actually like to see this go out to the community at large rather than just parents. Only because I think if we send it out through the town, we may get better feedback on what everybody in the town is looking for. It's saying right now it's it's parents and, and community. Right, but how would we send it out we to don't the have town? That in everyone. Yeah. They don't know. They don't do that. They, they do not send out um, the week that we could put it on the town website. Sure. But that's about yeah. all yes, we can do. They won't send it out through their uh, Listener, code no. red. No, I'm not asking for the code red, but I oh, know okay. they have weekly updates that people receive. Um, if there's a school committee meeting, if there's a town meeting, or yeah, they they've not done that in the past. We can put it on the website. That's probably the best we can do. Okay, that's perfect. Would would another ba way be to release something to the Post, to the Chronicle, to the local newspapers and news media, so that they can get it out to whoever? I mean, we can't yeah. make people come. We can't make. Yeah, we can do that. Yes. You know, a horse in water. Let's do that. Yes. <laughs> but if yes. we get it, if we get it out there, then more people will see the process is going on and understand what the process is. Because truly, our business manager is going to be presenting a budget with us to the public, and the public is concerned about the finances of the town and that we are frugal and that we are using the money well. And if they are participants and aware of the process, then they're more likely to have some ownership to, to buy into what the product, whoever, be supportive of the person too. So. Yes. So I think this is going longer than we thought it would, but how about that? <laughs> um, a couple of quick things, I think. Um, just a point of maybe education for me as well. This is a very technical position from an accounting perspective. Are we confident, um, with the town accountant, I would think we would be covered, but it's not named yet. Are we confident we have the right technical questions yes. of an accounting person? We um, will be providing like the MASBO interview type questions. Okay, and there's a key, answer key, and all that kind of fun stuff. We have no, there's no can, answer key. Somebody who can actually interpret the answers and know that they're the right answers? Yeah, yeah. we also have discussions as as a screening committee, um, usually after we have, before even, but also kind of to get an idea as, in terms of like an anchor, is kind of what they're called for question, for these interview questions, kind of what you would expect as the answer to the question, right? If we answer this question, what do we want to hear that tells us that they successfully are able to answer it? Um, so not only do, do we discuss that as part of creating the questions, we also take time during the interview process to have discussions both 
in between candidates as well as you know a, a more of a, a larger discussion at the end for all of that um, so that's when we gauge you know in, in we discuss the answers where we feel we, we, we would place a candidate based on that so yes there is more discussion had by the screening committee about the appropriateness of the answer um, and you know whether or not the answer met what the expectation was okay I think it's important to understand that this is a screening committee not a selection committee yep. so the screening committee whittles down we hope a large number of candidates yep. to a handful of candidates right. that it's not selecting anyone but even so I get my point here is this is this is a little it's it's a significantly different skill set right that we're looking for than when we hire a teacher or when we hire even an assistant superintendent or a super I mean superintendent's a much bigger thing but you know it's there's a lot more of the technical accounting that's necessary and well, hopefully and that's there is but you also need CV. yeah I mean, you also need to have packet. similar well, skills that, but. but you need to have similar skills as you would an assistant superintendent or other central office you have to have interpersonal skills oh, I know to, that um, I'm not trying to dismiss yeah. the interpersonal side. I'm just wanting to make sure that that the, the, the fundamental portion, right, of their role is accounted for. And mm -hmm. if we, with the finance, with the finance director or town accountant, I think we might have that. With uh, Mr. Schweitzer, we might have that. Uh, there's just a, a balance question there for me. As long as they're able to say, yep, that that's the right answer, right, in terms of how MGL works for how we set up accounts and you know transfers and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, that was the essence of the question. I, obviously, the soft skills are very, very important. They're going to be sitting here. They're going to be taking questions from the, the public, and they've got to be able to handle that, right? But this is more of the technical side. Um, my next question is, um, I just happened to be poking around today, and I don't know if MASS and MASC cross post, but there's also postings on MASC? Yes, MASC also, yes. Do they cross post? Yes, okay. they do. But we can certainly add that. Double check, yeah. Um, Oh, actually, MASC, yeah, we can. We have the membership, so hopefully yeah. we can post there, but maybe um, yeah. not. I mean, let's, we can check, um, at least check. Um, and then the online survey for staff and parents is right in the middle of vacation week, 19th to 24th, right? Um, and we're looking to get feedback that is substantive, that tells us what we want. I just have a little concern that that window's too tight, and maybe if we add the, the week we come back, um, February 19th through 24th, right? Yeah, we could add we could add some days. I, I will tell you, don't get too optimistic about the rate on this one. Uh, we didn't get many the last time <laughs> and, uh, we, well, we that's for this position. We also typically try um, to use whatever we get in those surveys to help guide us for that meeting when we're designing the interview questions, which is kind of why you saw it you're seeing it I guess condensed down to that period because we want to try and have that available for the screening committee I would agree um, with that but that's why I was thinking okay I can't go to March but maybe we can go February 28th yeah we could we could add yeah. it if we went to February 28th then I'm thinking if sure. we sent out yeah that's fine I, yeah we I mean, could. You know, the other thing I've heard right yeah. historically is that sometimes a message gets sent out you know we have a whether it's over a vacation period or right before Christmas or and so people lose it right so if we send it out say the 19th and then we send it out the 24th then we send it out the 27th and it's like okay last call yep. you know you can't complain because we gave you plenty of notice we gave you the opportunity um, and we opened the window large enough that you were no longer on vacation or anything else like that you can focus on what you would want to reply to um, just making sure that staff the community the parents uh, involvement is, is as appropriate as possible and I don't think we have to move any other dates as a result of just adding yeah, that no. window a little mm -hmm. bit yeah that makes sense so anyone else move to approve the business manager screening process and timeline as amended as amended, as as amended. amended. Second. second all those in favor six zero uh, the there is an updated calendar in the packet found that this morning it may change a little more but that's fairly up to date we've added some things that I guess this is mainly for John and Tom you know, so. would you like a motion yep move to adjourn second all those in favor you didn't even have a chance to see a second. Well. <laughs>